Guys, Marco here from Aviero Life CS. Welcome back to the channel. First of all, I want to apologize for not being able to upload videos in the last few months. I've been busy doing some stuff, different projects, and uh, also I had a technical uh, issue with the computer, but it's all fixed. So uh, welcome back, welcome back. I hope you had a happy new year, 2023. And uh, one of those projects I've been working on is to try to get these videos better for you. And I hope you're going to like what you're going to see. So let me know in the comment section below what you think about it. If you have any ideas or suggestions, please let me know. So let's start with the fire protection system review. I hope you like it. So this is what we are going to talk about with the fire protection system. And uh, today we are going to cover controls, indicators, and lights. And then in the next videos, we'll talk about system description, systems test, curage, and abnormals. Let's start with control and indicators. And this is where we can find, uh, we have the overheat and fire protection panel switches located in the aft electronic panel. We have the fire switch override, uh, this uh, fire switch for the engines and APU. This is the way you can override the switch uh, you can see number one, the fire switch override. We just push the switch and it unlocks the fire switch. Some airplanes, they have the engine start levers like these ones. And just to mention, then the, when they are illuminated red, it means that an associated engine fire is detected or the fire test switch is held to the overheat fire position uh, right here. Caution, do not apply rotational force when moving the engine start lever. Okay, so let's watch the video now to explain what these switches do. Okay, so we'll talk about the overheat and fire protection panel switches. And we'll start with the overheat detector switch right here. We have three positions, normal, A, and B. In the normal position, detection loop A and loop B are active. If we move it to the A position, detection loop A is active. And if we go to B, detection loop B will be active. Let's go back to normal here. And then we have here the fire warning bell cutout switch. When we push this switch, it extinguishes both master fire warning lights, silences the fire warning bell, it silences the remote APU fire warning horn on the ground only, and it resets the system for any additional warnings. So let's see how this one works. I want you to pay attention to a couple of things. Uh, the fire bell is going to uh, be a silence, and the fire warning lights will be extinguished once we press the bell cutout switch. So let's see how it works. So you see, we don't have the bell anymore and the fire warning lights were extinguished. Next, uh, we have the extinguisher test switch. It is spring-loaded to the center position. In positions one or two, it tests bottle discharge circuit continuity for all three extinguisher bottles. So what we want to see is the three green lights coming on position one and for position two. Now here we have the full inoperative and overheat fire test switch. It is spring loaded to the center position. In the full inop to the left, it will test full detection circuits for both engines and the APU. And remember uh, in the next videos, we'll do the test so you can see which lights are coming on when we uh, move this switch. In the overheat fire, it tests overheat and fire detection loops on both engines and APU and will well fire detector. Now, if we move to the APU fire switch, when it's illuminated red, indicates fire in APU, unlocks APU fire switch. There is a note saying that the master fire warning lights illuminate, the fire warning bell sounds, and in the main wheel well, the APU fire warning horn sounds on ground only, 
and APU five warning light flashes. With this switch is in, it's a normal position and it's mechanically locked if no fire signal. When we move this switch up, it arms the APU extinguisher circuit, it closes fuel shut off valve, APU leader valve, and APU inlet door. Trips generator control relay and breaker allows APU fire switch to rotate. If we rotate it to the left or to the right, it discharges APU fire bottle. And then we have the engine fire switch. When it is illuminated red, indicates fire in related engine, unlocks related engine fire switch. Note master fire warning lights illuminate and fire warning bell sounds. When it is in normal position, mechanically locked if no fire signal. When we move the switch up, it arms one discharge squib on each engine fire extinguisher, closes fuel, hydraulic shutoff and engine bleeder valves, disables thrust reverser, trips generator control relay and breaker, deactivates engine driven hydraulic pump low pressure light, allows engine fire switch to rotate. If we rotate left or right, this charges related fire bottle. So for these three, we have a fire switch override. So for example, if we have a fire in the APU, we press the fire switch override and then we can move the APU uh, switch up. Once we have it here, we can either select left or right. We are going to see the APU bottle discharge coming on. Okay, so next we'll talk about the cargo fire panel. And uh, first I'll show you what we can see in FCOM 2. Um, this is the switches we can uh, see in the cargo fire panel, and this is uh, also located in the AF electronic panel. So we'll talk about each of them in the, in the video. Um, next one, uh, the APU ground control panel. This one we'll talk about it. It's in the main uh, wheel well. Uh, number one is the APU bottle discharge switch here. It's spring loaded to the right and safety wired. If we move to the left, this charges the APU extinguisher. Note, armed only if APU fire control handle is pulled at this panel. Number two, we have the APU fire control handle. In the up position, that's a normal position. If we move it down, it arms the APU bottle discharge switch on this panel only closes the APU fuel shut off, a bleeder valve and APU inlet door, and trips the generator control relay and breaker. Number three, we have the APU fire warning horn cutout switch. When we push the switch, it silences the fire alarm bell, silences the APU fire warning horn, and causes the APU fire warning light to stop flashing, but remains illuminated. Number four is the APU fire warning light. As we can see here, it's illuminated red, a flashing indicates fire in APU. Note also flight deck fire warning bell sounds and APU fire warning horn in main wheel well sounds. Illuminated red, steady, indicates APU fire warning horn cutout switch has been pushed following an APU fire indication. Now we have the master fire warning light. Remember this one is in the glare shield and we saw it in the previous video, we will see it again. When this light is illuminated red, indicates a fire warning or system test in engine, APU, main gear wheel well or cargo compartment. Fire warning bell sounds. If on the ground, remote APU fire warning horn sounds. When we push the light, extinguishes both master fire warning lights, silences the fire warning bell, silences the remote APU fire warning horn, reset system for additional warnings. Note, pushing fire warning bell cutout switch on overhead fire protection panel 
results in same action. And then we have the lavatory fire extinguisher. Let's talk about it a little bit. Number one, we have the temperature indicator placard. White is a normal condition, black exposed to high temperatures. And then we have the heat activated nozzles. Flat black is a normal condition. Aluminum indicates extinguisher has discharge. Both nozzles discharge toward the towel disposal container. Now let's talk about the cargo fire panel here. And this is how it looks in the airplane. And remember, it's located in the aft electronic panel. And we're going to start talking about the extinguisher test lights here. Illuminated green, cargo fire test switch is pushed and fire bottle discharge is equipped. Circuit continuity is normal. That's if we press this test switch here. Number two, we'll talk about the detector select switches. We have two of them with uh, three positions each. In the normal position, detection loop A and B are active. If we move it to the A position, detection loop A is active. And if we move it to the B position, detection loop B is active. The detector fault light, which we can see here, illuminated amber, one or more of the selected detector loops in either cargo compartment has failed. Now we'll talk about the cargo fire test switch is this one here. If we push this one, test circuits for both forward and aft cargo detector loops and suppression system. So the cargo fire arm switches here. If we push these switches, which is what I did on this one, just for you to see the armed indication, if we push that one, extinguisher armed for the forward cargo compartment. Aft armed, if we push uh, this one here, extinguisher is armed for the aft cargo compartment. So the cargo fire uh, warning lights we have for forward and aft here, Illuminated red, at least one detector in each loop detects a smoke. With power failed in one loop, at least one detector on the remaining loop detects a smoke. There's a note saying the master fire warning lights illuminate and fire warning bell sounds. Next one is the cargo fire bottle discharge light. Illuminated amber indicates the extinguisher bottle has discharge. We have the cargo fire discharge switch, which is this one here. If we push it, if system is armed, discharges the extinguisher bottle. Now we'll talk about the master fire warning light here. It's located here in the glare shield. When this light is illuminated red, indicates a fire warning or system test in engine, APU, main gear, wheel well, or cargo compartment. Fire warning bell sounds, if on ground, remote APU fire warning horn sounds. When we push this uh, light, extinguishes both master forewarn lights, silences the fire warning bell, silences the remote APU fire warning horn, and resets the system for additional warning. Note, pushing the fire warning bell cutout switch on overhead fire protection panel results in same actions. Okay, let's talk about the lights we have in the uh, overheat fire protection panel. And we'll start talking about the engine overheat. It's illuminated amber and indicates overheat in related engine. The master caution and overheat the test system and shadow lights illuminate. Then we'll talk about the fall light, illuminated amber, with the overheat detector switch normal, indicates both detector loops for an engine have failed. Illuminated amber with the overheat detector switch in A or B, indicates the selected loop for an engine has failed. Note, master caution and overheat detect system and shadow lights do not illuminate. Then we have the wheel wheel fire warning light, which is here, 
illuminated red indicates fire in main gear wheel well. Note, master fire worn lights illuminate and fire warning bell sounds. Okay, then we have the engine bottle discharge lights. When they are illuminated amber, indicates related fire extinguisher bottle has discharge. Then we have the APU detect in knob light. When it is illuminated amber, indicates APU detector loop has failed. Master caution and overheat detect system annunciator lights illuminate. We have the APU bottle discharge light right here. When it's illuminated amber, indicates APU extinguisher bottle has discharge. And then we have the extinguisher test lights here. When they are illuminated green, the extinguisher test switch is positioned to one or two and circuit continuity is normal. Okay, that's the end of the video for today. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to the channel yet, please do it now. And don't forget to hit the bell so you will get notified once I upload a new video. If you think these videos could be useful for somebody else, please share them. And that's going to help me a lot to grow the channel. Next week, we'll continue with the fire protection system review. Until then, guys, please take care and hope to see you soon.